Well, slots unusable, key cards inoperable. Just two of the many issues MGM Resorts faced in the past week due to a cyber attack. Also, personal information from its customers compromised and people still cannot book online through MGM's website. Caesars also reportedly paid out millions to hackers. So the question is, is it safe to head to Vegas? What's the experience going to be like? Washington Post travel reporter Andrea Sachs is joining us now with more on the impact on tourists. Welcome, Andrea. It sounds like the cyber crooks Hi. hit pretty much every aspect uh, of the organization here. What, where do things stand right now at the MGM? Well, they're slowly trying to come back online. So what had happened from what we understand is there was a cyber attack. I think it's safe to use that word now. Um, and they tried to shut everything down to protect themselves. I compare it to kind of like an armadillo. So they're trying to protect mm. themselves so that there's no more infiltration. When they did that, they really, you know, they made us realize how much we need online services. So suddenly digital key cards weren't working. Online check-in wasn't working. Elevators weren't working. So that all shut down. But now as they're getting a little more understanding of what had happened, they're slowly coming back online. For gamblers, that also meant obviously slot machines went dark. Um, they weren't working. Um, if you had winnings, you couldn't use the ticket to get your winnings. You had to go to the casino cashier. So everything became manual, or as one of my experts said, we went back to pen and paper. Yeah. So if somebody is is going there in the next uh, few weeks, months, holidays, what do they need to know? How do they need to prepare for what is going to be maybe a lingering effect here? Well, I think they're trying to get online as quickly as possible. And you just obviously have to be patient and you have to be understanding what's going on. The bigger issue is that for people who have been a guest or maybe will be a guest in the future, you're we're giving over a lot of personal information to for, you know, for hotel reservation, that could be your credit card, your address, um, sometimes driver's license, high rollers, they have to give their social security number. Wow. So it's important to kind of lock down your gadgets and your information before you provide this to no matter what hotel or casino it is. So make sure you have two-factor authentication, make sure that your passwords are not your dog's name, um, Make sure that you are, your credit is locked and only unlock it if, say, you're getting a loan. So all these things that you can protect yourself in advance for an event like this. Yeah, it's scary to think about social security numbers that, that might be out there. What do we know, Andrea, about uh, who is responsible for this and how, how close our police are, are on their trail? I don't know. The FBI are being very FBI, yeah. where they just they're looking into it. And Nevada Casino, the, the gaming organization, also is being very tight-lipped, and they're looking into it, as is the governor. You also have to think, with MGM, they're all over the world. So this affected probably, you know, Macau and Japan and Detroit, casinos all over the country. But we just see the, the greatest hit would be Vegas, because they have about 14 casinos and resorts on the Strip. So they're being very tight-lipped. Um, MGM hasn't really been too transparent. I know that people who have been there had no idea this was going on. I mean, they thought it was some kind of like electricity, you know, electricity issue. So slowly, hopefully, we'll know more, but we don't know that much at this point. And, and it's not just, I mean, casinos. I mean, big companies all over the world. This is a new fact of life, a new reality. Um, what is the calculation that, uh, that companies like this have to make when deciding how or how much or what ransom to pay? Oh, I have no idea. Um, there is that rumor that Caesars, which got hit a couple of days later, paid, uh, I think they were asked for 30 million, but they paid 15 million, but I have not determined that's been corroborated. So um, that's just floating out there. That's above my expertise, unfortunately. I feel like they don't want to, you shouldn't support them, but at the same time, you know, it's scary to know that someone has the data, but also even though they say that they will give it back. Who's to say they really will? They've already been criminals and mm -hmm. uh, they can't always be trustworthy. So their information could end up, unfortunately, on the dark web. Yeah, hit the nail on the head. Why it is so troubling and scary. Andrea Sachs with The Washington Post. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you.